G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. Uh, still no photos of space because uh, La Nina is preventing me from that. I did get an hour on the chest piece in the sky, uh, which looks pretty good, I reckon. But uh, other than that, not much action. Uh, also, I'm doing a bathroom renovation, so that does put paid to a lot of the filming I do in this house. I am normally film in my kitchen because I like my kitchen. It looks a bit like a laboratory, but I'm doing the bathroom now. So the place I poop every day for the rest of my life will be amazing. But at least this year Australia is not on fire, uh, which is a good thing. So back to basics. In today's video I want to talk about planetariums, particularly mobile planetariums and what I think is the best one you can get for any phone ever, uh, which is SkyGuide for iOS. And the reason for that, I don't know if you've noticed, but if you look at many planetariums, even Stellarium, the most popular one, they kind of look like us. And this is not a slide on them. Many of them are hugely functional. I love Stellarium, I use it all the time, but it just looks a bit lackluster. I know what space looks like. I take photos of space all the time. This is the expectation and this is the reality. So join me as I show you yet another reason to suck on the teat of the Apple ecosystem and jump in and buy an iPhone and become part of the cool blue bubble gang. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. This video is sponsored by Spatula City. Spatula City! Spatula City! A giant warehouse of spatulas for every occasion. Thousands to choose from. And what better way to say I love you than with the gift of a spatula? Spatula City! Spatula City! Use the coupon code MY. What a big spatula you have. Where did you get it? I really need one. Show me now, show me now, show me now at the checkout and you will get your 10th spatula free. Now, before I show you SkyGuard, let's take a step back. There are plenty of planetarium bits of software out there. There's plenty of mobile ones as well. They're all very good. Some of them have uh, way bigger databases and features than SkyGuide currently has. However, as an astrophotographer, I need to show you why I like this particular app. A few years ago when I was getting into the hobby, like most of us, we need to know where certain stars are when we're doing alignments and whatever. So it's handy to point your phone at the sky and just see what you're looking at. And I noticed that all the other ones, while they work, they just weren't very pretty. And SkyGuide had this really beautiful celestial background. And that's no accident. Now, Rizinger from Seattle embarked on a truly ambitious photographic project to mosaic the entire celestial sphere. This meant traveling with his dad across both hemispheres to shoot and stitch a 37,440 exposure, 5,000 megapixel photograph of the entire night sky. It is truly mind blowing. I mean, check this out. He had the idea to integrate this amazing high resolution photograph with planetarium software. And that's how SkyGuide for iOS was born. I used that original version of SkyGuide, which used that photo as its basis. Now it's evolved beyond that. They're using even more high resolution imagery. The stars are rendered with correct colors and whatnot. But over the years, the app has just got better and better. And you'll see what I mean when I show you a hands on here of how it works. Right now, SkyGuide is so easy to use that even a visual astronomer can do it. It's won a bunch of awards on Apple. I think it's even been featured in Apple Keynote before. Unfortunately, you will need an Apple phone to use it. So if you're using Android, uh, just be aware it will only work for iOS. So the uh, solution is to do yourself a favor and get a real phone. Now this is SkyGuide right here. Before I jump in, uh, I'll show you my preferences. I like to turn the mythology off that just puts big bears and all this crap all over the sky. Uh, I also like to turn off the music. It is nice, the music, but it can be a bit distracting when you're outside. So turn the music off. There is night vision if you want to go into red mode. I'm here in the middle of the day. Uh, the moon is but a sliver up here. Uh, but let me show you some things. The first thing to note is that you can obviously change your horizon and I can hit the time up here. I can change the date and I can fast forward. Um, and the view is just spectacular. You'll notice straight away that everything looks amazing. Like this looks like a border one sky. 
It's just stunning. And if I zoom into something, here's my girlfriend, Karina. The detail is just popping. You can just zoom right in there. I can see a lot of the stuff that uh, I would see uh, photographically. And that's, that's why I like to use it as a photographer. Now, if I hit the information here, this image of Karina is not so good. You should, uh, hey, Nick, if you're watching this, you should swap this out with one of mine or even just a screenshot from, from your own app because this is much better. Uh, really nice and what this allows me to do is just explore the night sky because I can see all the hydrogen right I can just swap around and go oh this area looks interesting I can get the coordinates for it on any particular object I can look at the properties so I've got coordinates but also all the information about that including these lovely little articles and write-ups uh, it's really quite helpful and as someone who came into this hobby and didn't know much about the sky and what was going on, it's really helpful to just jump around. Karina itself is great, but when I'm at high focal lengths, maybe I want to explore some of this stuff on the periphery, right? Beautifully exotic gum objects and just stuff that people don't normally get to see because they're just hitting the, the big targets. <laughs> Now the search is particularly cool. Uh, we've got my favorites in here. So this is one that I've just flagged for some other time when it's um, nearby. So I've seen it in a magazine or something and just thought I wanna add that to favorites so that when it is at the right place in the sky, maybe I'll hit that later. And look at what we've got in here. Like the catalogs are just incredible. We've got the solar system here, but we've also got satellites, ISS of course, but also recent launches. Deep sky is probably the place you'll be most as an astrophotographer. We've also got the globes, the galaxies, clusters, and we've got these exotic things as well. But just to give you an idea of how good the simulation is, let's just go to the moon. Pretty easy to find. Look at that transition, it's just beautiful. Now, I want you to notice something about the moon. If I click on it and then fast forward, I get to see the moon's motion as it goes through space. And we see the phase changing, which is just, which is what you'd expect. But this simulation is fairly accurate. If you do this during a lunar eclipse, you'll see the moon go red. And if I fast forward a little more, you'll notice that we can even simulate the libration of the moon. So you can see that wobble of the moon as it, uh, as it gets bigger and smaller. So supermoons and micromoons, apogee, syzygy. So it makes it really useful for planning. Now, this app has replaced a number of other apps for me. For example, I used to have a, uh, a Jupiter app so I could see what the moons of Jupiter were doing at any given time. But now if I flick over to Jupiter here, I can zoom in and I can see a perfect simulation of where the great red spot is. I can then fast forward this. I can see where the moons are. Let's watch it do a shadow transit here. There we go. There, a beautiful shadow transit. So you can really plan your shots at any time of the night. Okay, so here's a classic Southern Hemisphere view of the Milky Way. Uh, there's Karina in the middle there. But did you know if you hold down you get the x-ray vision of the sky. This is insane, but it doesn't end there. You hold it down and then hold that little tab on the corner and you can look in the entire electromagnetic spectrum. I mean, Jesus Christ, would you look at this? This is insane. A view in hydrogen alpha. Now, if you're an astrophotographer, you already know some of this invisible stuff, this ionized hydrogen. Uh, because we reveal it when we take these long exposures in HA. But to be able to look around and explore like this, so you can see exactly what's available to you before you plan your shots, just incredible. X-ray, ultraviolet, visible light, infrared, microwave, radio, gamma ray. Isn't that incredible? Now search is persistent, so if you click around and lose it like that, and you hit the search again, uh, it'll have recent searches in there, which is a really great feature that just came out in the last update. 
and we can see it uh, spinning around the earth here. This is also great for plan planning transits. If you do know that there is a solar or lunar transit coming, uh, you should be able to see it going straight past the moon or the sun. And that really helps with planning too. I've used this before and even gone back in time to review transits that I've captured and it's worked really well. Uh, of course, we've got information about the space station, beautiful 3D graphics. It's just a visually spectacular program. If you're just sitting at home and you're using this like a magazine, you've got articles. So we have articles in here for the highlights of the month. Uh, some of these are written by people that you know. Let's just pick one at random. Dr. Dust, Dr. Jennifer Millard. Jenny Millard from the Awesome Astronomy Podcast, which you really should check out if you haven't. Uh, but let's take a look at an AR feature. Nice. But yeah, the app has, as I was saying, it replaces a lot of other apps uh, that do cool stuff like this. Now, speaking of augmented reality. Let's go outside to the observatory. I'll put the compass on and I'll hit the AR button and we get a lovely view of the clouds. And look at this. It helps me to plan what I can see from the observatory looking straight up. Now the sun simulation isn't quite as cool as the uh, moon simulation. It does look cool. Yeah, you can see those flares are static. They're not real flares and it's not, um, not a real sunspot, I don't believe. However, the app does have an Apple Watch integration. So I can click that and I can see the real-time sun activity from NASA and the ISS at my fingertips. It even integrates into my watch face itself. As you can see, it's got the moon in the corner there so I know what's going on at a glance. Okay let's look at the Optus satellite here and zoom right in and I'll do that trick with the time where I fast forward it so you can see the fast clip it's on there it is zooming through space uh, but there's something special about this satellite if you know anything about TV now if we zoom out here and look at the motion the satellite itself isn't actually moving, it's geostationary. So this is why uh, you'll notice for me at least, when I'm taking photos of the Rosette Nebula, it just slices straight through it. Here we go. And you'll see because the Rosette Nebula is on the geosynchronous path, I get, this is like a super highway of satellites. All the satellites just zip right through Rosette and uh, <laughs> ruin my images of it. So that's a quick look at Sky Guide, but what the hell? So that's a quick look at Sky Guide, but what the hell do I know? I'm just a backyard astrophotographer. What do the real astronomers think? Now, if you've ever listened to the awesome astronomy podcast, If you've ever listened to the Awesome Astronomy podcast, you might be familiar with Dr. Jen Millard, AKA Dr. Dust. Dr. Jen is one of the three hosts of the Awesome Astronomy podcast and the managing editor at Sky Guide. Let's see what she has to say about this amazing piece of software. Yeah, absolutely. Sky Guide is always my go-to observing app whenever I'm planning an evening of astronomy. And that's not just because it's got useful features like here's a list of objects which are optimally placed for your particular location tonight, but I just find that its quality and its versatility puts it head and shoulders above the rest. We also try to make the app an educational tool. 
So one of my favourite things that you can do in Sky Guide is you can explore the night sky using the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So this is light spanning from gamma rays right down to radio waves. And we do this using real data. So one of my favourite things to do is to have a look at the constellation of Orion. And when we look at it with our eyes, you know, we see this beautiful dark backdrop with all these glittering stars. But then if we have a look at it in the infrared, which you can do in the app, suddenly you see all of this beautiful glowing cosmic dust. And if you know me and you've listened to the podcast, you know that I'm absolutely obsessed with cosmic dust and it's just one of my favourite things to do. I love that the colours of our stars are as close as possible to real life. And if you really want to, you can make them twinkle as well, just like you have on a normal observing experience. And that's something that we pride ourselves on in the app, is really trying to replicate that observing experience. But if I had to pick my absolute favourite thing about Sky Guide, it's not just that we show you where all these amazing cosmic phenomena are in the night sky, but that we also provide you with so much information about them as well. So nearly every object in Sky Guide has an article associated with it. So we're not just throwing you know, a bunch of numbers at you like, oh, this is how big it is, this is how far away it is. We really want to tell you the story of this object. So who discovered it, how it was discovered, when it was discovered, structure, composition, even missions which are studying the body right now. And at the minute we're updating our constellation articles and oh, I can't wait for you guys to see them because they are absolutely fantastic. We've got amazing, fascinating history, you know, origins from ancient Babylon and also the ancient Greek stories and all sorts of other cultures mixed in there. We're talking about the best deep sky objects in these constellations, the stars, oh, they're absolutely fantastic. And I think for me, that's the best thing about Sky Guide is that it is an educational tool. So, you know, if you're doing some astronomy one night and it happens to be, you know, clouding over quicker than you'd like it to, which is always the case for me in Wales, you, know, you can just sit back with the app and have a look and learn about the cosmos. And yeah, I think it's absolutely brilliant. We also like to keep our users up to date with the latest space news that's going on. So aside from all of our articles associated with individual objects and constellations and such like, we have a news feed where we cover everything that's going on in space. So we do space exploration, we do the latest astrophysical discoveries, and we always include some wonderful pictures in there as well. So, you know, you can keep up with what's going on in space right now, as well as exploring all of the night sky that's available to you, or possibly not available to you, because you can have a look at Southern Hemisphere constellations if you want to. Have a look at the Milky Way down there, explore the Magellanic Clouds if, you know, you're from the Northern Hemisphere, and vice versa. You know, you can just open up the entire universe if you so wish. Thanks Dr Dust and if you've never heard the awesome astronomy podcast do yourself a favour and get onto it. It is in my opinion the best astro podcast on the internet and they have a YouTube channel and it's just starting out so get in on the ground floor please go give them a like and subscribe. Anyway I hope you've enjoyed that episode. I get a lot of questions about the Sky Guide app so I just wanted to show you what I use because when I'm doing graphics on this channel I often use Sky Guide because it just looks so good and it's so easy to navigate. Uh, highly recommend. This is not sponsored or anything. This is just something I use literally every day. So ditch your Android phone, go get a real phone and install Sky Guide. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. Bye.